Hey, good people. This is Sharika, EB, and Sabrina. You're listening to The Kickback. Glad you decided to pull up. What's good, Kickback family? You hear three of your favorite people, but you might only hear two people, and you'll have to figure out who it is. Um, but it's your boy EB, Sabrina, and Sharika, and you're listening to hopefully your favorite podcast. And if it's not your favorite podcast, I need you to switch that. And if if it's a, for other reasons where you don't want to switch that, then I would say stop hating. Um, man, I know the last couple times I told y'all that I make sure I have a song for y'all. And guess what? Your boy finally do. Oh, and right. it is the new. It's on the album God Did, but the song is also titled God Did, and it's a DJ Khaled where it features the one, the only Jay Z, Sean Carter. Some people might just know him, fiance, husband, Dwayne Michael Carter Jr., the lovely Lil Wayne. Of course, it also has Rick Ross on there. Now, all three verses are, um, it's what you expect from these three artists. But a part that really stuck out to me was a part from Lil Wayne verse where he said, I prayed more said less god did the rest now for many of you you probably wouldn't understand that you really be praying like that or you probably only pray when it's time to eat your food you don't really be connecting with god how you need to be but i'm not here to preach to you today that's not that's not why why you hop on hopefully that's not why you hop on if you do um you can text me or call me well don't call me so i'm not gonna pick up um you can text me or message me on one of your favorite social media sites and i i appreciate you there but i won't appreciate you on the pod <laughs> but that's the song i got for you i had a temperature the temperature is about 84 degrees where it's sunny it's beautiful it's a love but some of y'all y'all already getting the vibes of cold weather and lovely winter but here in florida it is still all great a little bit of drizzles here and there, depending on the day. But as far as the temperature, like it's a cool and it's a little scorching than usual. But it's like 90 sun degrees right now, which is wild. Um, But yeah, so that's my temp and that's my song for you guys. Sharika, what you got for the people? What's your temp like? Okay, my temp is all over the place. Uh, my temp is high at a good high for me. 85. I'll go with you, EB, 85. Because... And it relates to my song. I'm going to go with the song of In the Club. Am I in the club? No, I am not. Do I really agree with this song? No, I don't. But I was looking for a birthday song. And that's the only one I could think of at this time. Because guess what? Tomorrow is my birthday. So I'm on birthday vibes right now. But I uh, I don't have any birthday plans, really. But you know what? I just am grateful for another year of life. Lord willing, I make it to tomorrow. So I'm already starting to celebrate and be grateful. And uh, I wish I could think of another birthday song. I looked up birthday songs. There's a lot, but I don't know any of these songs other than the Stevie Wonder or the regular Happy Birthday. And I like the Stevie Wonder version, but I don't like that when you be singing that in the Black gatherings and people don't know the verses and then and then it's just awkward. So you know what? I don't just don't play that. Just play the regular happy birthday for me. Or if you want to in the club, if you're feeling spicy, that's my temp. Our girl, Sabrina is not with us right now. I don't know if she'll be joining us. We don't know where she is. You know, at the podcast, you just never know what you're going to get. It's a surprise sometimes. So if our girl joins us, we'll be happy to have her. But that's my um, temp at this moment. Doing well. Uh, I've only worked two days of work. So, you know, that's a blessing. And the rest was just, I'm just going to be celebrating. So that is where I am at today. That's what's up. So um, it's a lot of stuff that's been happening in the world. And it's a lot of stuff that's been going on, I would say, not crazy um, within our personal lives, but just different things here and there. And I know you get ready for your birthday festivities. Um, mm-hmm. But what we talk about today, what what we sharing with the people, how are we gracing them with our wisdom and our knowledge this week? Oh, um, we're going to talk to them about a few things. But I forgot to mention this in my temp check because a few months ago, EB, you got to talk about your God baby. And so today I forgot to mention, I have a new God baby that I got to meet this past weekend and he is the cutest. And I got to spend my Labor Day weekend with my God baby and his siblings and the rest of his family. And so shout out to them and it is good to be a god parent i just wanted to mention which that. is an amazing family shout out to them i don't know if we're gonna share the name but we don't gotta share the name on the pod um but definitely some be- beautiful babies um from that family and that tribe and also some very interesting personalities um mm-hmm. one of the ones she is 
she is a force to be reckoned with. Like mm-hmm. she don't play the radio with people. Um, but then when you vibe with her, with this youngin, she really vibes and she's the smartest and cutest thing that can be. But boy, the looks that she give, if looks could kill, there would be a lot of people that would be dead. Um, and if attitude, if attitudes could actually cut people, it'd be a lot of people with all type of just blood <laughs> coming from them because her facial expressions are just, they are just different. But shout out to that family and shout out to that bundle of joy that they just added to their family. And maybe, maybe the last one to add, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Lord um, only. But I only will Lord say, knows. I will say a sneak preview that that we might have a visit from them at some point on the podcast to share about a special topic. So you will get to meet them one day, podcast people. So stay tuned. Definitely. And I know. And I won't say too much after this part, but um, if we do have them in the future, and I'm I'm pretty sure that some of it might just be from their just natural journey um, through the times of just the different things dealt with uh, testimony in and of itself from them to as the parents, but also as a family as a whole, as they journey through a lot of different ups and downs um, and not ups and downs as far as like, oh, this down is like down and out for them. But it's just like, how do you move forward through this type of situation or how do you move past this specific incident or tragedy in life and just keep it pushing yeah so again i tell y'all we wasn't gonna preach to y'all but that's <laughs> hopefully that that because you're probably like why are they talking in cold why are they so subliminal why they just can't say it what are they trying to say just be faithful and remember that god did okay you can look at how you really bring happened. full circle full, full circle, circle back to god did, did. god did and also stay that means stay tuned so you can really hear what's going on. That's it. That's all you gotta do. So what we talking about today with the people? So we're talking a little hot topics. We haven't done hot topics in a while. And so, you know, I thought, you know, let's bring the people up to speed on some of our thoughts and feelings on some of the things that are going on in this world. Some things a little serious and others, some people might find serious. And we're like, oh, that's ridiculous. But one of the things that I um, saw yesterday online, and I was like, I got to hear EB's perspective on this because, you know, as we talked about last week, we talked about sneakers and we talked about and one. But, you know, I know EB is just I would I would I don't know if you would define yourself this, but I would say you're a sneaker head. Uh, I if you've ever been around EB in person, you know, he got always has some nice shoes on, some nice sneakers, if it's not dress shoes, but those are always nice as well. And and I've heard about his closet and how many sneakers he got. I know he's given away some, but he's still got a healthy, healthy closet with some nice sneakers in there. So I wanted to hear his perspective on this topic. Um, so Evie, would you define yourself as a sneaker head? I would say it depends on what, because everybody have different definitions for sneakerheads, I think, right? So for some people, sneakerheads are someone who just, um, I guess, purchase or have a lot of sh- shoes or have top shoes for whatever reasons. Um, for some, it might be like somebody who has like a fetish, so to speak, and will pay top dollar for certain shoes. Um, I'm sure there's other definitions out there where like you can't miss certain releases of shoes. And so I won't go extreme as a sneaker head, but I will say that I am a sneaker. Um, what's the word I can use? I'm a sneaker connoisseur. I, I like nice say, things. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I, I, I would say I do have a, uh, I have a, a deep interest in shoes and most of the shoes that I have a deep interest in for those who are curious, or if you're ever thinking about getting me something, definitely Jordans, but not just regular Jordans. There have to be a number attached to it. One to 14, any jump number retros that's above 14, they are no interests of mine. So 15 to about, I think we're at 32 or 33 with Jordans. Now you won't ever see oh, me wearing wow. any of those. You get me like the 18s, 17s or the 18s because I just don't rock none of those. Um, kind of like after his playing career kind of finished his shoes kind of did not look the same. They don't look as appealing as the ones that I, I guess you could say that I really enjoy. Um, but that's just me. And I would say whatever the largest bill, um, that you've probably in your hand at one time, that's probably the amount of pairs of shoes I have in my closet. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I know most of us aren't walking around with 5,000 or the 1,000 or the 5,000 or the $10,000 bills that the real, real rich people used to have back in the day. So hopefully you can guesstimate on how many pairs of shoes I have. Um, but yeah, and that that's where I would say a, a sneaker connoisseur. I like nice things, but Jay's Air Maxes, a few Adidas and some shoes here or there that like Cole Haan or some T-Max, um, mm, some Pharrell edition Adidas. It just really depends. But I don't know. Sneaker connoisseur. I won't say a sneaker head. Okay. I actually have only had one pair of Jordans and I feel like mine ain't official because they were on the high end, which I didn't even know that you said it, 35 or something. Nigga. I didn't even know they go up so high. I had the dub zeros. Those are good. Dub- so those were like a limited edition, like nine, oh, I really? said 19 and 20. That's why I said those, but oh, like okay. those is like, but most people aren't in the 15s or the 16s or the 17s. Dub okay. zeros came out a little different. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So I'm, uh, I, that's the only pair of Jordans I've ever had, but, I don't even think I have them anymore. I hope y'all. What happened to them? <laughs> I got rid of them, EB, because they. I actually wore my shoes because I and they. I like wore them out, and they were just looking terrible. So I just got rid of them. I believe I did. I think I got rid of them. I don't think I have them anymore. So yeah. Oh, but sorry, guys. That was a tangent because we weren't even talking about that. What we really were supposed to be talking about is this uh, Kanye West battle or beef or EB said, well, I guess he said, you don't, you don't have a beef unless the people know you have a beef. Well, they know he mad at them. So I will say this is probably a beef with Kanye and Adidas. So I was mm-hmm. on Instagram minding my business and I saw, I followed Diddy, Puff Daddy. Uh, I don't know how P Diddy, however you want to call him. I saw him talk about we we not supporting Adidas until they make this right. I'm like, make what right? What what's going on here? So I went on, you know, I had to Google the Adidas and say, what is they up there doing at the Adidas that we can no longer support? So I hear that now. So as I was reading, I read that Adidas and Kanye have a beef because Eb, do you know? Can you fill it in a little better than me? I I um. I'm saying so let my, you let you go ahead and let's see. Okay. Let's see if Okay, so I'm gonna try and so Kanye obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious to you all. Kanye had a contract or was working with Adidas. He has uh done his Yeezys uh um shoes, he has which has been a very popular, popular um pair of shoes. And I, I was gonna ask you, e- Evie, do you own any Yeezys? I've never seen you any Yeezys. Do you own any? I don't. No easies on my end. See, that's another reason why I'm not a sneakerhead. I don't get all of them. Okay. I'm not I'm not a Yeezys fan. I don't I actually don't even really like the look of them, but then it's almost like a song. The Yeezys to me is like a song that you didn't like, but then you hear it so much in the mall and you're like, Oh, am I into this now? That's kind of how I feel about the Yeezys. I did not like the look of them. I don't really think they're great. I thought they're kind of ugly, but then I started seeing them all the time. Like my brother has some, cousin has some. Like I feel like I started seeing them, and I'm like, oh, they're making, making them not that bad. But he, my, I know my brother has the slides, um, the Yeezy slides, and I hear that, and and they're supposedly super comfortable. I put them on, uh, my brother's shoes on to see if they were as comfortable as everybody talks about them. They feel pretty comfortable, but they also feel kind of hard. But maybe because they're not really to my foot because he's been he's the one that was wearing them. But um and then they have these weird looking ones that look like to me like a like a rib cage. I hopefully that's a good description. Like the bones of a rib cage. They're like I can't even explain them. You have to look them up if you haven't seen them. They're weird looking to me. Uh I see my cousins with my cousin with a pair of those. So I've seen people rock these shoes. They're not really my style. Uh, but yeah, so he's had these shoes with them for the past couple of years and they've been making a lot of money and they're super expensive too. They're very expensive and they make a lot, but they've been making Adidas a lot of money. So from my understanding about this, what's brought the beef with them is that, uh, Kanye feels like he's lost control of like the, his Yeezy footwear and that basically Adidas, um, is, like kind of like boxing him out from 
from like having, you know, the control that he used to have. And they basically, he feels like they're stealing his designs and um, basically keeping, using his name to sell, but kind of blocking him out. And if you know one thing about Kanye, he, he's always been into fashion. Even like when you hear some of his early songs, he talks about different designers. He talks about clothes. He's always had his own style. I used to like his previous style, the more preppy look. This little homeless look he got going on, not really my thing, but yeah, so Kanye has been into fashion. And so for him to be like, I guess, ousted if his own collab with uh, Adidas, I guess, has been a huge thing for him. And so he's basically um, wants to kind of discontinue his relationship with them. Um, Am I getting this right, Evie? Definitely. It's basically everything that you just said. It just imagine uh, those who probably don't follow Ye or don't care for this even conversation. Hopefully you just, it'll help you understand how you handle um, what a, a, a frame or a term that's um, often, I don't say often, it has been recently or repeatedly used within the culture is stand on business, right? Where you have to make sure you're a person of good morals or good ethical behavior. And basically they've been using um, his image and likeness and name um, for some of their newer productions. And for whatever reasons, it seems that there haven't been specific or an agreement on the, I guess, on the contract, so to speak. There wasn't, you know, ink to paper on saying, yes, we can do this or we can follow through with this specific thing. So, Ye, as he normally does in Ye fashion, gets on social media or gets very irate and saying, we don't have an agreement on this. So anybody who helps Adidas in this way or purchases their stuff, you're not actually helping me. And you don't even have anything that's official because I didn't endorse this. So, but basically what you were saying was definitely accurate. So Kanye is beefing with Adidas and I thought, okay, so these, here are my thoughts. I get it, Kanye. I would be pissed too, because if you're like, if you're creative, as we know that he is, whether we like what his, the result of his creativity, that's neither here nor there. The, the act, the fact is he's a creative. And if you put your blood, sweat, and tears into something, or if it's just something you enjoy and something you have your name attached to, I get being mad that all of a sudden it's like, hold up, you're using my name. You're using, you know, some of the things that I've, you know, you're stealing my designs or whatever and doing your own thing with it. That is disrespectful. And that is frustrating. And I would be mad too. My question is, I don't know if, does social really media really make the world go around like does that really create the change? I don't know. But what if he didn't go on social media? Well, what else would he do? I don't know. This is what the dilemma for me is. Is it really a social media issue? Like, do we need to always bring things to social media? I feel like now for Kanye it, and celebrities, it might work and it might be a good thing. Um, because they actually have a voice that is heard by the masses and people may actually boycott it or stop purchasing it. Um, it. It has worked in the past for some, but I'll just leave it at this part. I'll I'll stop here and then I'll finish my thought later. But I don't know where, where if I would take it to social media or if I would just take it to the courtroom. What do you think, Evie? Yeah, so I... I can understand a little bit of both of them. One, because that part of his currently, especially in, in the past few years, or at least the rising of social media, it seems that everything or everyone, I say everyone, because not everybody one does this, a decent amount of people feel that's the need, needed space or the outlet to share specific information. Um, he's also a person who says because of the impact that he's made on the culture or on the brand or on the company, business organization, whatever you want to call it, it is that he should be he should sit at the table, so to speak. Like, I think he wants to be like the creative director or creative design influencer or something at Adidas. And he's like, you guys don't even give me, I guess you can say a seat at the table where everybody who, a majority of the people who wears your products or a lot of people who support what you do don't look like the people who are sitting at the head of the table and, you know, getting me at 
somewhere around the table, preferably if it's Kanye, probably the head, then it will be really, really good for you or good for business. So he was like, he just wished he could be a supervisory board member, so to speak, to them. And I don't know if it's in the form of creating things specifically or being a consultant or being someone who calls the shots um, or what, but he was definitely adamant on saying that he needs some form of a voice for them. And I think he even gave out like a soft warning towards Gap, which he has a partnership or had a partnership. I think he still does a partnership with Gap to telling them they better get together or basically they're next for one of his rants. Why don't you think that Kanye just gets his own, like just has Kanye or Ye- Yeezus or Yeezy or whatever Yeezy brand like why do you think he wants to be attached to like I understand coming into the game you want to be attached to a well known established um, company but like at this point I feel like Kanye's um, experience Kanye's name Kanye's finances is I mean not mind you I really don't know how much he got but you know I feel like why why won't you go out on your own? Like why fight with these people to give you a seat? Why fight with these people to to um, to to you know? I guess work with you in the capacity that you feel honored and respected by. Why don't you just be like you know what? I'm out of here. I don't need y'all, and just do your own thing. Yeah, I think he's tried that, if I'm not mistaken. But that's part of one of the big or famous moments where he tells Sway, like, you ain't got the answers, Sway. Sway, you ain't got the answers. You don't sit at the table with this person, that person. He goes to name a lot of the high-level celebrities or the people who makes a fortune on doing what he wants to do. But I think it's because they have, we talked a little bit about that a lot, of individuals just keeping certain spaces. And I think um, it's either one, he doesn't want to fully invest all of his own money in it, which that's an issue, right? Because if you really believe in yourself or if you're really as great as you are, then basically everything you invest will come back. If not one time for you know, at least one time for, but you're hoping a three or five or 10 times for, but he kind of just put it in a headlock where those people won't allow him to be in those spaces. They won't allow him to have those type of um, factories or shipping or manufacturing that type of product or the magnitude that he wants to do it at, if I'm not mistaken. And that's, again, from his conversations with a while ago, like several years, well, probably a decade now, because that's how like, long, long time ago it was when he to the fashion industry. So I think that's part of it where he wants that assistance or that support for brands that he feels he has helped build, so to speak. Um, and I say that with Adidas, where it's like Adidas at one point just became irrelevant. Like mm-hmm. Nike was, Nike had it on the lock and Nike was running it forever. And then in his mind, when Yeezys came out, it gave them a sense of notoriety or a place within the field of fashion again, especially in the field or the piece of footwear. So I think he is at their necks or at, yeah, I guess the necks, the heads of the leadership of the business to say y'all need me like or and, and I kind of in the best way and I need y'all to help build y'all so I am y'all and I'm trying to figure out why y'all not giving me the space because if I wasn't there then there would not be y'all anymore and also of course ego and pride and those types of I would say possibly for him too mental health plays a, a major role in the outburst that adults have now, I would agree. Like, Well, I would say this. I agree that Kanye gave Adidas a resurgence. Before uh, before Kanye was with Adidas, the only thing I really saw people sh- rocking with were the Shell Toe Adidas, which was made popular by Run DMC. They, you know, they was talking about Adidas. They gave Adidas a little cred. Um, a little street cred and, and people was rocking the shell toes and those were really the only Adidas the little shell toe ones were like the only ones that seemed sort of popular other than that I never really seen people talking about Adidas until Kanye gave them a little you know th- made their brand more popular again in the in the more recent years so I will agree with Kanye on that I just am like Kanye I, I'm not saying I agree. I feel like he is in the right here 
The only thing I would say is like, at this point, you know, I would stop begging for a seat at the table and start making your own table. I would say, you know what? Why don't you start with a little, a uh, small, small, whatever. And plus people be paying these, I mean, people be paying hundreds, thousands of dollars for Kanye stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. But seeing that people are actually willing to buy things at these high prices, I would just start with something small, a very small unit. And then once you sell that, then you can build and build. And then you can basically do outdo Adidas or Gap or whoever and, and sell your own merchandise. And maybe it didn't work before, but it's like when you, the thing that we learned and which I kind of said was and one last week was like, when you're working with someone or quote, quote unquote with, but technically under they are the ones that decide what they're going to do or what they're not going to do. So you're really at their mercy. And so if you if you really want to, you can't make them do anything other than what you legally was, what was legally defined in the contract. So if they're not uh, breaching the contract, Kanye, you really have no leg to stand on. You would think out of morality and good, kind, heart naturedness, you know, people would do right by you, but it's a business and people don't really care about people. They really there to get theirs. And if it's at your expense, well, it's at your expense. But and we all know that, like if anybody should know that, Kanye definitely should know that. But So that's why I'm like, stop fighting with these people. But that's also what Kanye does too. Kanye fights with people. But I'm just like, go, go make your own table in, 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 Take all that social media, use the social media to drive people to yo stuff and not to Adidas and not to Gap because at the end of the day, they're really going to be out for them and they really ain't going to care about you. And that's kind of what seems to be happening right now. And that's the, I guess you could say the the joy, right, of social media because people get to post whatever they want and people get to interpret it and to dissect it and comment on it as best or however they want. And that's one of the things that comes with the territory of putting stuff out there, whether that's you verbalizing something public, whether that's you verbalizing something in a small crowd, whether that's you verbalizing it on social media. Once it goes out, like you, and I want to say this to everybody, I guess this is what you can get out of the Kanye situation. You're like, what does that have to do? Once you put something out into the atmosphere, just know that that gives most people, and I say most people, because there's probably some people who you just don't vibe with and you like don't ever talk to me again, and y'all have come to that agreement. But it gives the masses the opportunity for free reign of public opinion, public crime to say what they want and what they please. Like it's always funny to me when I see people who post something and be like, "Why everybody always in my business?" And it's like, "You posted about it. Like you, you made me part of your business. Like you shared that with the world. Like and once you put it out there in the public, it becomes." For public consumption, like unless you had it on like, you know, for Instagram, I think it's called like close friends on Twitter. I think it's close circle on Facebook. If you just got it private and someone else has screenshotted your stuff and shared it, then that becomes a different story. But even in those moments, which we talked about um, in our friends conversation, what are certain things that you text or something that you tell your friends? It's like you have to remember anything you put out there. It's liable to get to the masses with Kanye specifically. Um, I think he, um, as he continues to deal with stuff he has to deal with, he craves attention. And I think it actually feeds or it fuels his being of life. Like, I think if he's not, and I won't say aggressively, but I would say if he's not at, if he's not fighting for something or advocating for something, I think he'll hopeless in some way, shape or form. Would that be his relationship? Would that be his business? Would that be his brand? Would that be his music? Would that be his name, his fashion? Any of the like, and you can go on and on. But if he's not fighting for something specific, I think that that's when he feels like he's worthless in that moment. That that might be that might be that might be what it is. And I think because I was going to say this about Kanye, that the sad part, like I do believe he's right in this situation, but I feel like Kanye is always so loud and sometimes often loud and wrong. That people don't, it's like they almost tune him out because they don't, because it's like one thing when you hear, it's like not, not saying he's the boy that cried wolf, but it's like 
when you're always hearing somebody going off on something, people always be like, okay, here we go again. Versus like when you hear somebody that never really speaks out and then they speak up and you're like, oh, let's pay attention to this. So that's the kind of thing I think about the danger sometimes of Kanye. Not danger isn't, but danger for him is like most of the time, a lot, it feels like, a, like, especially in the past few years, people have just taken him more as a joke than anything else. So I hope he finds resolve with his situation. Oh, but Evie, you did bring up a good point, which is what I wanted to say earlier. The thought that I wanted to get back to. This is okay for Kanye, celebrities. But you everyday people, y'all got to watch yourself. Because this is the stuff, when you be going off, this is how you lose your job. This is how people be coming for you. When y'all be putting all your business on the social media, like y'all, y'all gotta watch yourself. Then y'all be mad when y'all you lose your job because you said this and you went off. They was mad at your job for doing this, and you ain't like your boss, so you want to put all your business about the boss on there. And and if you know anything about EB, and like he mentioned, there were they are screenshotters out there. And next minute you, they done screenshotted you, which you didn't went off and posted. Thinking you getting some justice, and the justice might be you no longer being employed. So you remember you ain't Kanye, and remember to watch what you post on there. You that is so something. true. No, that was it. Because <laughs> people think they Kanye, and they get on there ranting and raving. Next minute, when they be told uh, uh, you no longer work here no more, and they don't even have to be about your job. People be getting fired every day for stuff they put online whether it's pertaining to their work or not. So watch yourselves on the internet. The other thing I wanted us to talk about today has been the huge debate. And, you know, obviously we're part of the church. So we're part of church culture. And we're, you know, some of the things that affect mainstream, the church has a lot to say about it. But one of the things that I was very surprised about the past few weeks is seeing how a lot of people in the church are up in arms about the student loan forgiveness. Were you surprised, D.B.? Not much surprises you, but I. But was you surprised by this? I think I, I was more surprised by the I, the people as the church as a whole. Day surprised um, because it continues to just show. Um, how divided we truly are on certain things. And it's a lot of things that seem in my mind, at least simple. Mm. And it's like, how can we be divided in this instance? Um, but I was again, surprised by that, like how the church is still divided. And anytime the church is divided, it just never really makes sense to be, especially on situations where you would assume that everybody should be thinking the same way, but I guess that's not the case. When you were younger, did you feel, did you really feel like politics had a place in the church? Or do you remember politics being a thing that was prevalent or like, dis not really discussed, but like being a um, divider in the church? As a kid or as an early, like I would say as a kid or as a teen when it came to church? No, not really. But I know like politics was always something big within our home. Like our dad he made sure, like, even when I tell people I watch, like, this news channel, like, a left-leaning news channel and a right-leaning news channel, right -leaning news channel. I got that from my dad, so that's not an EB thing. Um, I credit that to my pops. But it'll be, we'll come home, and after, it'll be like, oh, y'all can play around outside. You can go, like, we'll go to school, Boys and Girls Club, come home, eat, shower, all that stuff. But then most times as a family, whether you wanted to or not, and I say that whether you wanted to, because we grew up where there weren't no TVs in your room. So you are watching TV in the living room and he'll have it on one watch for like 30 minutes to an hour. Then he'll switch it to the other one. And then sometimes he'll say, hey, come and watch this. What do you think? What would you do if you was a president? What would you do if you was a senator? What do you think the governor should do? What do you think the principal at this school should do for this situation? Because news back then was a little bit of everything, I feel. And it probably was the same that it is today. But as a kid growing up, I, I think maybe it was just we watched a lot of local news as well um, that fed into it. But it's just weird that it seems like a lot of stuff now is so divisive and so crazy and so chaotic and hectic that you're just like, of course, I'm just going to shut this down and I'm not going to watch any of it. Um, so as a kid, I grew up watching politics and I did. I don't think the church was as divided as it seems now. Now, I could be 
mistaken and I could just be alive and more aware. And I say alive as in just more aware, so to speak. But then I also think of, you think of slavery. The church Mm. didn't seem to be on the same side with that. Think of Jim Crow and civil rights. The church didn't seem to be on the same side with that. You think of lynchings. The church didn't seem to be on the same side with that. So part of me, I guess, again, not necessarily because it's just human nature and that's what sin does. Definitely surprised that the church is still divided on these things that I don't feel the church should be divided on. I agree. We've talked a a bit about this, Um, but I am surprised like being younger, like the civil rights and all that stuff that was a little before my time, but like growing up and being a teenager, even young adults, I really didn't feel the presence of politics much in the church um i just didn't really see it as a divisive divisive as it has been in the past couple of years hopefully my mother-in-law doesn't mind sharing this but she me sharing this but she said one you know that somebody in her church was like i don't even know of any christians that are democrats and i was just like that's a very presumptuous thing to say like as if being a Democrat is anti-Christ. Like, that's weird. But yeah, it just seems like these days, like, it's really become a, a, a very divisive thing. And now with with this student loan forgiveness, it's almost became a politic slash, um, I, I don't want to say racist, but politic, I'll just say he- heavily politic and um something that has really been causing division growing up i didn't see that the church would be that the church was divisive especially not dealing with politics so in the recent years i it was it's been surprising to see what the church has been divided upon and now you know it seems a lot racially over the past few years which we've talked about many times but now it's about student loan forgiveness. I'm I'm just baffled as to 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 the things that we get up in arms about. The student loan forgiveness is is just like really the, this is this is the 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 fight now. Like this is what we're battling against. As 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 y'all, as y'all heard that little giggle, you know our friend is on, and we're so happy to have her, Sabrina. <laughs> Listen, I'm. Glad there's not a divide between the three of us. <laughs> this is a solid trifecta. They are forgiving because we are recording at a different time. And it's because of me. I'm doing great. My temp tra- check is sunny and 75. I'm in my home state with my family. And I always just get so revived and energized and joyful around my family. My parents are hilarious, as are both of my brothers. And they just... It's just like falling back into like the perfect little puzzle being with my family. So all that being said, I totally missed the time because I was talking and uh, I passed on my phone and saw it. So I felt so bad, but both of them had been so gracious. And now I'm just hopping into the conversation. I am curious how you and Evie feel about this student loan forgiveness thing, because I haven't seen that of the divisiveness that y'all are talking about. I mean, Evie, as usual, he'll share a little thing here and there. That's crazy. That happens on social media. But outside of that, I really, really haven't heard a lot of the buzz. To be fair, I've traveled a lot this summer because it was my first summer not being worked to death. So (laughs) I've been here, there, and everywhere, which means I haven't necessarily been in the church community on Sundays. But I doubt if I had been, they would have talked about it from the pulpit. Mm-hmm. Um, are you guys seeing a lot on social media? Like what's going on? I didn't know this was a thing that we were divided upon. On the social media girls, they've been at it. EB, tell them about, tell them about the things you've seen on there. Oh yeah. It's a few different, but like some feel like, you know, everybody should be paying back their loans in full. Others feel like, oh, if you borrowed it, you should pay it back. Then some people use like the little scriptures from like, I want to say Proverbs, like, you're a slave to your debtor, like all of those little subliminals or like, how could you fill out or sign a contract and not pay it back? There are church going people. Some of them who actually work oh. for the same church organization that I work for. Um, some of them are even like pastors. So they're not just like, I'm not saying you're at a different level, so to speak. Um, just hmm. because all of us going to have to face Jesus. Um, 
whether we want to or not, we're going to have to stand in front of Jesus and be accounted for our, our words and our actions. But it's just funny to watch how people play, again, these games of politics. And it could show me um, that people have an allegiance to politics and not an allegiance to God or not an allegiance to the word of God, which is still God, um, or even a, allegiance to people, right? Because God is love. Um, and we find certain ways to, like, let's bash um, student loans forgiveness. But when almost just about three fourths of our politicians receive forgiveness for PPP loans, there was no outrage on either side of the line. Uh, whether you lean left or lean right, or if you don't lean anyway and you walk straight um, as an independent, if that's considered straight. Um, but it was just funny to watch how after some of those signals came to light, you started showing them how some of their favorite politicians, whether it's in the state that they reside in or even in as close as the districts that they serve or those areas that some of their favorite congressmen serve in, you show them that they were forgiven for their PPP loans. And you're talking about some of these people, millions of dollars, not just $10,000 or $20,000. You're know, like, well, that was different. They were doing it to keep people still employed or they were doing that for this. I'm like, you don't know how they spent that money. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what your news outlet telling you. But like, let's stop this nonsense where we regurgitate some of the things that people say. And I also say this, and I think I said this a while ago, I encourage all my friends to continue to do this. When you see people post like long extended responses on social media, I encourage you to just copy and paste and put it into your Google and just watch how sometimes it's not their own words or their own thoughts. Like, cause you know, some of the people you rock with, you know, you're most times, hopefully you do. But if you don't, hopefully, you know, your social media people and you just look at like, that was very impressive. I still agree. I still disagree with you, but that was an articulate way of sh- those thoughts or those stances. And you start thinking, but I actually know you like Ooh. you're not that articulate at all. You don't Ooh, know what? how to put those type of words together at all. So I encourage you to just copy and paste that that comment and just put it in Google. And sometimes you'll start seeing how what you see some of these people do is just regurgitate what's literally online. And they're copying, and pasting just news links or their favorite networks or comments from other people or blog posts. And a lot of it isn't even factual it's just words and just have to hold people accountable so that's some of the places sabrina be a social media or some of the things that i've seen church members at least saying on when it comes to um i guess you could say the student loan not plagiarism I, i'm assuming <laughs> i'm assuming that this is the same audience who was very mad at kaepernick for kneeling am i right or wrong I, much, pretty you know? much <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I used to be really like angry about stuff like this. Then I got amused by it, but now I'm kind of, um, I'm going to say jaded, but like, I just feel like the truth is so clear. Simply have to open their Bibles to see it. I mean, how many parables did Jesus tell about forgiveness? I mean, there's a whole parable about a worker who started at the end of the day and he agreed to agree to one wage, and somebody came later on in the day and he got the same wage, and the first worker was mad. And he's like, that's what you agreed to, right? So there's so many examples in the Bible that show us where Jesus' heart would be on this issue. I can't believe that people, no, actually I can't believe it because of all the things I've seen in the past, you know, for a lifetime, but especially like working in the church uh, for as long as I did. I can't believe it, but it's just so like, I'm just so tired and I'm just not even surprised by it. Are we really, like Sharika was saying, debating whether people should be forgiven or not? And this is coming for someone who worked their tail off to pay off all of their students loan. I was a roommate with a widow from Craigslist whose house had roaches. <laughs> and I, if anybody knows me knows I don't rock with roaches. I hate like I, I can't do it. I did that for an amount of time because I said I am not going to grad school until I pay these off. I worked my way through college. I had three jobs. It was tough, you know, and I have no problem with people getting their student loans forgiven. I would have loved to have gotten that forgiven. That's like us being like, oh, no, now there are vaccines for certain things people should have to get polio (laughs) because it didn't exist it didn't you know like what are you talking about but I'm definitely not going to go back and forth with these people because I already know where their heart is and it's just in a bad place it's something I can't identify with we come from a faith that's all about forgiveness like we're you're upset Mm -hmm. that somebody's going to get grace and favor really you're that hateful okay remember what the bible said now because when you go before him because I don't even know if they believe in the bible the way they act but it's like judge how you're going to be judged the measure you pour out is the measure you're going to be given Mm. so okay you want to hold back are you ready for somebody to hold back on you 
I was thinking about mm. the scripture about the um guy who um owed the, I think it was the king a lot of money or he owed the king some money and then the king you know he was brought before the king and the king forgave him and then he turned around and went to somebody that owed him a lot less and was like oh you owe me this money give me my money and if you're not I'm throwing you in jail and when the king heard about it he's like weren't you the same person I forgave this is sounding very much like these people and girl Rob- furthermore he didn't just ask for his friend to mm-hmm. give him the money he choked him <laughs> choked him <laughs> choked him. him and then threw him in prison yes Oh my God. Which are- honestly, I can get it because he was working out of fear and anxiety. He was like, man, I almost lost my life. Had you given me the money, I wouldn't have been in that situation. But well, also he, he missed a bigger picture. He owed way more. He owed way more than that man owed him. Maybe he was, maybe he was going to give everybody that energy. We'll never know <laughs> because he got, he had to go back. <laughs> See, but he should exercise the grace that he did. That's the thing. I agree. That was, the, and right. I'm like, wow. So you were forgiven, but yet you want people to be held and pay the price for what they owe. I mean, mind you, but Sabrina, even if this- you weren't forgiven, that is empathy. Empathy mm-hmm. is, I don't have to go through what you go through to be able to empathize with you. And I really? Was say, yeah. Cause I was just going to say the same thing. Unlike you saying you paid off your student loans, I didn't have student loans, but yet I'm happy for the people that are getting the grade because I I know how helpful that could be that could be ch- life-changing to someone to say this to, to to not have to pay five or ten thousand dollars that that could be a huge impact on someone's life and i'm like i'm happy for them it don't affect me but i'm happy for the people that are getting the forgiveness but it does affect all of us because you can tell how the health of a, a society by the quote-unquote mm-hmm. least of these you know what i'm saying and let's not even talk about the game that the student loan companies are running because they're definitely running a game because what? i know people who owed let's say you know i'm mary and i owe 50 dollars. interest is this i only got to pay 10 cent a month on it whatever and then in 10 years somehow now i owe 60 dollars because <laughs> of the interest and the minimum Girl. payment and all of that so are we not going to talk about as and obviously we're christian on this podcast we're not necessarily a Christian podcast, but I'm going to talk about it from that perspective. So the Christians who have everything to say about, well, they shouldn't, don't be a slave to your lender and this haughty, toddy attitude about it. What do you have to say to the lenders who are running this game? What do you have to say about what the Bible has to say about charging people interest? What about the year Mm -hmm. of Jubilee? That is a Christian concept. Every seven years, all was supposed to be wiped out. Yep. So y'all, y'all, y'all mum on that is crickets now? Girl, I talked to my mom and I was talking to her and I was like, mom, how much do you owe on student loans? Or how much did you, how much was your debt? She told me, I said, how much do you owe now? She told me, I said, but that's more than what you started with. I thought you'd been paying. She's like, <laughs> I have. I, yeah, I you definitely. Exactly. You have to have a margin to pay. And it's kind of similar with credit card companies. Not as terrible because the interest with student loans a lot of times is way worse. But when I say gazelle intensity, Dave Ramsey turn <laughs> on those loans. So I, I gave the example of Mary paying 10 cent. No, you got to pay three $3 on it, even though they tell you it's only 10 cent. But guess what? My rent is $7 and I only get $10 a month from my, you know what I'm saying? So like it helps us as a society if other people can come up, climb out of the holes. And we need to hold these greed companies account accountable. Evie alluded to it and Evie, you're right. We don't hear enough about holding the people in the 1%, the 2%, these companies and these businesses. Weren't the airlines just like pulled mm-hmm. out of a hole not too long ago? I airlines, have yet to hear- banks traffic like every like or vehicles Period. auto industry banks like you can name whatever industry they've all been pulled out of like people have been put out of holes all the time but like i was telling you earlier one of the things for me that gets me all the time is i'm not shocked by it because during slavery the church was divided during jim crow the church was divided during lynchings during civil rights like all of these things throughout history the church was divided and today it continues to be divided so again it's not a shocker it's just i guess you could say it's, it's a disappointment of people who like i just i wonder like 
like, are, are we reading the same scripture? Are we, are we really reading out of the same Bible? Um, and I know everybody don't live out what they read, they learn. Um, but for some of them, it's funny because it's just like, well, let's have a sit down conversation. Like, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. That's why most people who know me, you don't see me going back and forth with people on social media no more. Um, because most of these same people, when you see them in person, they get selective amnesia and they forget they had that conversation with you. And you're like, that's why I got these screenshots. So you don't remember. Well, what I was really trying to say is, no, you weren't. Right memories. Yeah. Like, so it's just, it's just what, uh, and all you can do is smile and laugh, pray for their soul. Um, and if they don't get it together, they'll ha- end up in hell, but Ooh. you can't control that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did Beyonce sing? She said, "Oh, now you wish I was complacent." Like I'm like, y'all better hope I don't get my a second wind. <laughs> if y'all thought I was going in on y'all before, don't be asking me to come back. Don't be asking this and that because I was I was very much tamed before. Don't let the Holy Spirit convict me about like not being mum on some of y'all who really need to be called out and held accountable. Yeah. And I won't do it on social media. I'm ready to get rid of Facebook today. If it weren't for the fact that my family was so far away and I love following my mom and all that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> because now even more so than before, I never feared y'all first of all, because I fear God, not man. If I was a, you know, person who feared man, then I wouldn't be a believer of Christ. That's straight from Galatians, right? So there's that. But like, there's no, like, what are you going to do to me? Can't no fire repercussions. Me. No repercussions. What are you going to do to me? What, 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 I felt that way before. And the people who work with me know I already had that energy that now it's times 50. And, you know, I hate to just come for that community because I'm sure it's all over the world. And like, as EB talked about as well, nothing's new under the sun. That's straight from Ecclesiastes, right? And the the Bible, like the church was divided when Jesus was here. Mm-hmm. We talked about this before. The people, most of the people who was calling out all the time, it was the church. church who were the people. people who gave Judas this the 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 silver to betray mm-hmm. him? It was the church, which of course, because of course the enemy wants to divide God's church. Mm-hmm. I mean, we really shouldn't be surprised by it, but it does wear on you. And I understand why Jesus flipped those tables. Because you, it ebbs and flows and you do get to a point where you're like, I'm, I'm so upset right now. I'm in the low, the low tide of it, mm-hmm. but I'm sure I'll have a point in my life again where I'll flip tables. This one is not really worth it because I hope it goes through. There's nothing y'all can do about it. Y'all can be sad. Y'all can complain. You know what? Go to the altar and pray to God and t- tell God how you don't want these people to get out of this hole and how you want just- the companies to keep getting off on them. They just their their thing is oh that we're gonna have to pay the taxes for all these people we're gonna our taxes are gonna go up because these people are getting a break they're gonna have to get the money from somewhere and it's gonna be our taxes that's their that's their plight that they're you know guess what they don't right, want to pay taxes any, mm-hmm. right and and guess what you didn't have got to say when we were bailing out all those people that Evie just mentioned you were mum on that the money always has to come from somewhere. And that's why we pay taxes to be there for our neighbor to, you know, like what happened to that vibe? We're not on that no more. It's every man and woman for themselves. Mm -hmm. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Mm -hmm. Because it's just like, that's like, well, what if a parent like me right now? I don't have kids. I don't have anybody in schools, but guess what? My taxes still go to school. So I'm going to be like, you know what? I don't want my taxes going to schools. I don't have any kids in school. Like that's what that's, that's taking my money for some. Come on now. That's why it's not about you. And also, speaking of putting people on blast, did you see um, when this was coming out, all like the politicians and people who were complaining about this, that the White House was tweeting? No. They were tweeting people. Weren't, isn't this you who had this PPE loan at the, and they were <gasps> the rates of what? the thing? Didn't you get a loan for forgiveness for the, your PPE loan of this amount? The White House was tweeting those same people who were on there complaining, uh, like the politicians and stuff that were complaining. Did you see that, AB? I definitely, you know, I saw it. You, you know, I saw it. That is hilarious to me. I love, see, that's the accountability I love. Oh, oh, you want to be out here loud about what, about them forgiving? Let's be loud about what you was forgiven for. I love that. I thought it was hilarious. And honestly, I think, I mean, do we have the Trump administration to thank for them tweeting out? Because I wonder if before his administration, if the White House ha- would have done that, which I'm glad they did it. It needed to be done. But I mean, I appreciate that. That's another little, uh, there are not many golden nuggets that came out of that administration, but that might be one. Call these people out. Absolutely. Well, 
y'all, the world's still going to be the world. People still going to be people and we just going to be here talking about it. So there'll be more things going on that we'll, we'll, we'll give our opinions on, but do your due diligence to research but also be a kind human being and care about your fellow mankind. Look out for people, do what you can for people. And just like God gave you grace, extend grace to others when able, when you're able. That's, that's the end of the story for me. Sabrina, did the you have end for me would be, yeah, does everybody not take a sociology class of some sort to understand how people groups interact and impact one another the domino effect of all our action and how when you're there for your fellow man you're being there for yourself mm. because even as Sharika shared if you're a couple with no children and your taxes are helping the school guess what these students are the same people who are going to be helping to keep our society the way it is or to help improve it mm -hmm. so you're still contributing we're all connected I you know I I don't know if we've talked about this before, but it's such an American mindset to think like I do my thing and that's it. And obviously I'm speaking in a very much a general terms, but as Americans, I want to speak to all of us. We got to get out of that. We have to, and I'm not talking about a lack of accountability. Clearly that is something that's important. I'm talking about understanding the bigger picture and the way things work and we can still have accountability even with people getting their loans forgiven, that's just it. And if you don't have the same energy for the people with the PPP and all those big corporations, then nothing, it's falling mute to me because there's such a lack of consistency. EB, what about you? Uh, I would say that if you truly, in the simple words, if you care, people act like it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's like I'm not even going to elaborate. Um, shout out to Joe Biden and his administration because I get to get up to twenty thousand um, wiped off, and guess what? My loans are less than twenty thousand. Praise God! And I mean, hopefully, I won't be at in between none of these celebrities that pay off my student loans. Um, for those of you who feel like only your taxes go to student loans or go to this, I would love for you to fact check that for me. Show me where it comes from. Um, where your taxes have changed due to this specifically, because I've been seeing cost of living and wages stay the same and housing market go crazy, or I've seen and continue to rise or gas prices continue to rise. And that was before any of these things. So I can't wait till y'all peoples get on the campaign trail and say, this is all like this because of blah, blah, blah. Well, I've seen how gas has been going down and nobody has been saying anything because not too long ago was, Scratching our head, how are we going to do these four dollars? And now it's around less than at least why guys at it was less than 20 the other day. And I was like, nobody commenting on this. What's going on? Like, why, why, why don't we celebrate the, the good things that happen in life? Um, when these moments happen, but if you truly care about people, just act like it. And for those of you who love Jesus or who say you love Jesus, just know that some of you, he going to tell you, depart from me. I never knew you because of how you responded to the least of these. But again, from the top of this episode, I told you, I wasn't here to appreciate y'all. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you grab something out of it. EB, when your debt is free of the, um, your student loan is free, I still am ready to have that debt-free party, just so you know, I'm still waiting. So when they free you from that, when they Amen. free from the student loans, I'm waiting for the turn up. Just saying. Debt-free uh, Probably be on a vacation somewhere. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I apologize, Shrek and Evie, because I know I've hopped in halfway and I thought I was done, but I'm not. Because unlike Evie, I am here to preach to you guys. Because as Evie was sharing, <laughs> I thought, what is at the heart of it? I try to get into the person's mindset who's upset. And the thoughts that came to my mind are jealousy and fear. And mm. if we're talking about Christians, fear doesn't come from the Lord. Do you truly believe God's provision is not enough to provide for the people in these situations and you? Mm. Are you so jealous that, oh, now Evie's going to be on a vacation debt free? And what, and now does that mean you can't take your vacation? God has enough blessings for all of us. And the mm. Bible literally tells us he does what he wants to do. 
his blessings reigns on the just and the unjust. I'm not mm-hmm. saying these people are unjust. I'm just making, I'm just using the scripture to show you like literally you need to really go in the mirror and look at your heart and ask yourself what is at the root of it? Because I don't think it's those scriptures from Proverbs because they weren't quoting them in other situations. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. I really think it's fear and like jealousy and not wanting someone to get ahead. I was just talking to my brother about this earlier. Like there are people in our society because we do live in a capitalist society that are really like intimidated by the fact that the little man or the quote unquote people on the bottom are going to have a come up. Mm. And, and Christians, we can't fall into that category. Okay. We can all have a come up. It's okay. You're going to be okay. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, friends. I'm done I now, I think, for real this time. <laughs> I agree. Did you have a word to share with the people, Sabrina? Or is that the word you had to share? Um, I think my word today, it's so unfortunate that I missed the Kanye conversation. So it's just an LOL and a hashtag really and when are we going to care about our sons as much as we care about our daughters? Because I'm hearing a lot about Chicago and North and how they're not going to be on Playboy and all this other stuff. But I'm not hearing a lot about how Saint and Psalm are getting raised and reared. And I'm like, is Girl. this coming from a society that has a lot to say, a lot to do with misogyny? Are you afraid that your daughters are going to end up with a man like you who's attracted to the things that their mother did? Is it not good enough for them to do? And it's not that I'm being pro playboy or pro porn or that's a conversation for a different day, but let's just keep the same energy for all of our children, girls and boys. And men, if you are fathers of your sons, don't neglect that. Keep that same energy because T.I. was doing the same thing not too long ago with his daughters and his son is one. Oh, y'all saw this thing. They said his son looked like a um a bread knot, a knot of bread. And someone said it looked like he hasn't been put in the oven yet. But anyway, that's just rude to talk about. Uh, it was funny. I have to tag y'all in the actual post. It was hilarious. But you know what I'm saying? That is my little nugget for today. And I know none of us are parents, but I have always kind of like felt that kind of undercurrent within certain cultures in our society where it's like, well, my daughter can't do this. And my, my daughter's this and da, 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 da. my daughter's got to be home. But what about your son? Because when we look at the statistics, it's a lot of homes out here without fathers. Mm-hmm. Men are more likely to commit suicide. Like men, it is very hard. To, it's hard to be human, but it's hard to be a man in this world. And let's keep, keep that same energy into regulating men's lives and all the other stuff. Okay. You're not just fathers of daughters. <laughs> we got boy mom and dads out there too. Well, hey, friend, expect- wait, stop. hold up. Before we go, <laughs> friend, before we go, we got to talk about that another time because, girl, what you talked about is not what we talked about. So you ain't missed nothing. We oh, talked about my, my bad. So, no, not your bad, girl. You just brought us. Wait, you talked time. about Kanye's what? His, his, his beef yeah. with Adidas. And then, and, and him wanting to. Oh, my bad. Oh, <laughs> no, friend. That was a word that needed to be said. Somebody needed that. That was a prophetic word. So somebody, you know what? Check, check your spirit. That might have been for you. My bad. Okay. Yeah. I will never do that trash again. Evie, no. what are you expounding on today? <laughs> no, I'm saying we got to talk about that. Cause whatever you're talking about sounds juicy and I need to get into that. Uh, I saw the post about the Adidas and I don't know, I hate to say because I'm female, I kind of honed in on that because that's a reoccurring theme um, with what he's talking about. And obviously, as a person, like I said, I have no children. I am not upset that he's caring about his daughters and he wants to have a say so in their life. I'm just interested in the thing he's hyper focused on. Mm-hmm. Because in Bound 2, I remember his wife was behind him and the, the big of pretty to go biggies were jiggling and you know i once again i'm not saying i'm anti that but it wasn't a problem then Mm -hmm. it was good enough for the mother of your kids and he Mm -hmm. had amber would say that he had that same kind of thing when they would get upset he would hone in on like oh well you're a hoe yours oh Mm -hmm. i'm the woman that you were very much attracted to and you sing about and now you're like well my daughters aren't gonna do that and when he speaks to society he's speaking about what he's not going to allow his daughters to do. But I'm thinking, Kanye, you as a man, 
yes, she has some successes, but there are things you need to do. And as far as I know, Kanye was kind of raised in a single home. His mom and dad divided. So when are you going to speak to society on that? Or are you just reminding us women that the most important thing is our virtue and our purity? And the church does this too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. You know how many men I know in the church who didn't wait until they're married and it is okay, but a woman does something, then they're like, oh, she's a hoe. She's a... It's like, there's more to us than our sexuality as women. That part. There is. Is there other things that need to be protected? And then there are things you need to be held accountable for. We don't need to get into it today because once again, I feel so bad. I'm late to the podcast and evidently I opened a other, whole other can of worms. But, you know, if God ever blesses me to be a parent, my daughter and my son are going to get the same energy. Mm-hmm. And I know that's very much against the grain, but I feel like the type of believer God created me to be, he gave me the personality who can handle being against the grain and is totally okay with it. And we all have different gifts, but I will stand on an island 10 toes down on mine. Mm -hmm. If the Holy spirit put me there. Okay. So, and once again, not judging anybody's choices. I'm just saying what I'm judging is our reaction and the way we treat people differently when they're making the same or similar choices. I'm judging the differences. Okay. Here, don't hear what I'm not saying. (laughs) friends and i feel like for the third time i'm going to ask eb <laughs> what are you, what are you expounding on today yeah so what i'm expounding on today is pretty quick um and it shifts definitely different from that conversation and it's just this week um by the time you hear this this week or end this month as a whole is suicide prevention week and my in september so just now places where you can find some form of help hope or resources when you're dealing with tough moments with your life whether it be friends who you know or thoughts of suicide or losing someone to suicide where you're just like Maybe I just want to advocate for someone or maybe I'm struggling with my mental wellness or maybe I just don't know. And I have no sense of direction. Just always know you can just dial 988. Um, but just know that you're not in this life alone, especially for those of us who are believers. You are not called to walk life alone. You're called to be and live in community. So that's all I got. Um, we're going to try to be quick. What do you recommend for people? Yeah, okay. I'll go right in line with EB. I want to recommend episode 30, season three, episode 31 of Health Community Community News. Suicide prevention goes 988. This is actually an area that the company I work for is leading in this podcast. The host, Melissa, talks to president of behavioral health and mental well-being for CVS Health about the work her team is doing to try and reduce suicide attempts among members by 20% by the year 2025. She also speaks with Ann Taylor, who volunteers and is herself a suicide survivor. Suicide does not discriminate, you guys. Uh, be uh, equipped with how you can help prevent it and check out the podcast. Evie, what you got? Mine is similar to what we talked about a little bit last week. We were talking about and one and basketball, but it is the malice at the palace. It's the untold. It's part of the untold series, but malice at the palace where somewhat of a brawl broke out between NBA players and fans after a foul. And you get to hear first, I guess you can see, hear the insight from the players themselves and some of the fans who are involved. And I know they were demonized and considered like thugs and angry people. But when you start to see how some of the stuff played out, um, they just lack self-control in that moment. And it looked it a little crazier than it actually was. So Malice at the Palace, Untold Series on Netflix. I haven't seen it. I've heard of it. I do want to check that out. Maybe we'll review that one day. My recommend is Love in the Villa. You know, I love a lo- good love story. So check it out on Netflix. It's a little romantic comedy. So that's my recommend for you guys. As always, if you are out here struggling with anything in life, um, just make sure there's people within your corner and know that there are people, even if it's just us three. We are not not experts by any means, especially when it comes like suicide prevention. But we do have somebody who we all are dear friends with who does for a living and have been doing it for a while. And he actually even lost someone um, to it, lost his mother, and he'll be willing to speak on it. So shout out to Jason. Um, he's one of the coolest people that I know and always is just down to earth. But as always, if life has to knock you down, make sure you kick back. Until next time.